Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time to go through the Finnish health system. And it's really a pleasure for me to show you here that we are doing this as a team with my dear colleague, uh, Permanent Jana Hulsukalio from the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry. So you can see and hear how we really plan and do things together. But um, as uh, leaders quite often think uh, and know, uh, when they have planned and learned something, it doesn't uh, uh, mean that the whole organization is running that way. So therefore, we still have work to do with my colleague <laughs> to get uh, also the new ideas uh, we will get from you then into action. Some history uh, first from Finland and overview uh, here. So uh, we have a population that is only 5.5 million and the density of people living here is uh, not very high. So uh, if you look at this map, it's uh, 1,100 kilometers from Helsinki to the northern part. Uh, and, um, most of the people are living here in southern Finland. And uh, when you hear our uh, um, legislation, which is universal access, so it makes uh, some challenges for us when planning health system here, so that we will be sure that everyone will have access to all the services, regardless where he or she lives. Um, we are uh, getting old uh, second fastest in the world after Japan, which also gives us uh, challenges in the future. And um, the economy here, oh, as you heard already from our Secretary of State, Paolo Lehtomäki, that we are very, uh, very happy people here, uh, it, it uh, doesn't mean that we don't have challenges. So uh, the economical challenge is, uh, is the burden of the official sector then to keep all the, um, uh, the requirements and promises our politicians have promised to this uh, uh, population who is living here in Finland. Um, about uh, those uh, uh, regions and primary health care then a little bit more in the uh, in, in coming uh, pictures. Something about our history. We have been uh, part of Sweden and part of Russia, and we have culture from both sides of our neighbors. And we do a lot of cooperation inside Scandinavia, and our politicians uh, and presidents also has uh, um, uh, been talking that we should do it more in the future, even more, because we are small countries here, and we share a lot of uh, principles, same principles in our legislation concerning uh, public sector, but also uh, rights for people and services for people who, who live here. Um, then uh, a big challenge was also after uh, World War II, when we resettled uh, 400,000 citizens from Karelia. And if you think that we are only about 5 million people here, then so it meant a lot. And it was a big challenge. And it also influenced how we then developed our country. We got through a rapid industrialization after 1950s. And there was a mass emigration in late 1960s and early 1970s to Sweden, which uh, was already industrialized further than, than Finland. In the uh, late 1970s, uh, Finland uh, reached the level of, of the OECD countries in GDP. Uh, and uh, li living of conditions and social security reached level that justified to call Finland as Nordic welfare state. And we now try to keep to stay there. Uh, we got through a, a recession and deep banking crisis in early 1990s. Uh, but 
we get our welfare state, regardless of, of that. And uh, during that uh, time, um, uh, the healthcare costs were increasing, especially specialized healthcare costs, and, uh, and that, uh, that's why we are doing a reform now here in, in our country, and I will tell you some um, about that later. What about our welfare model? We have universal rights for health, we have strong social cohesion, equal access to services, and these are based on the legisla uh, legislation, also in the constitution. Uh, it concerns the residents here, so it's resident-based system and taxation-based system. Governance is uh, highly decentralized in the municipalities, which we have more, and more than 300, and that is one of the problems we have. This is my ministry. I have two ministers, uh, one uh, taking care of, should I say, the money, the social security and social uh, benefits, and, and pensions, and then the other one taking care of social and health services and family issues. We are a big ministry, and we have uh, legislation and responsibilities from insurance legislation, causing all the in, uh, insurance uh, sectors, uh, then uh, uh, the pensions are uh, especially our issue, and uh, we, uh, we go through to a promotion of welfare health to the social and health services and also to the occupational safety and health. Uh, so there are uh, responsibilities according to working life, but also to whole social security uh, and uh, also those social and health services. Then we have a lot of institutions which give, uh, gives us information and do studies and also supervision to, to the system in Finland. Current situation. We have over 300 municipalities uh, uh, which are responsible for social and health services at the prim primary level. Then we have 20 hospital districts which are respons uh, responsible for specialized uh, health care. So there are different uh, organizations take, uh, having responsibilities from these two. And now we are joining in our free form this. We have five specific catchment, catchment areas. We have five university hospitals we, which then give under those five areas the most um, specialized care. And of course, because we are only 5.5 million people, there are uh, care which is really centralized to one hospital or two hospitals also. Uh, there is supplementary uh, private sector services. Uh, and in the reform, we are now combining so that we will combine all the resources and make uh, private sector and public sector producers equal and also adding uh, the freedom of choice to that. Social services uh, are responsibility of our municipalities, and they are joined there with primary health uh, services quite well. Uh, then we have uh, 16 a total uh, municipality uh, uh, coalitions who then take care of specialized uh, social uh, services uh, uh, for people with developmental disabilities. The concern uh, or, or, or uh, remarks and concerns we now have that uh, um, uh, the system is too decentralized, steering by the government is weak, um, and uh, primary health care and specialized health care are separate, and when the uh, population is going old, we also need social services to be part of that uh, thinking and organizing and planning. 
Uh, what are the good uh, uh, things we have is that munip municipalities have a legal obligation to promote health and well-being among the inhabitants, and the money which goes to the municipalities is not earmarked. So they really can do cross-sectoral work and innovations at the municipality level, and they have done a lot. So we have, during these 20 years, a lot of innovations about how to promote health, but because it's so decentralized, uh, it's uh, very hard to get uh, the learning go through the, the whole country. Health threats in Finland uh, have happened a lot to, uh, during the uh, last 20 or 50 years. Our, I, we have very low infant mortality. Our life expectancy is quite good, lower than in Sweden and in Norway. Uh, but a little bit higher than in Denmark. And Danish are very happy and they don't live so healthy, which <laughs> also, also shows their uh, life expectancy. And we try to merge those two here in, in Finland. But uh, there is uh, uh, inequalities in morbidity and mortality uh, still increasing and there are uh, 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 inequalities uh, um, more in our country between men and women than in, in many other countries. We have the lowest teenage pregnancy rates in the world. Communicable diseases are under control and coronary heart diseases, which were a great burden to our country during the 60s and, and 70s and 80s, uh, has become more rare. Mental health problems are the main reasons for work disability, and alcohol-related causes of death, uh, death are a main cause of death among working age men and women. In our uh, social and healthcare reform, we actually do a, um, a regional reform, which helps us, Jana and uh, me, to work then even better in the future, because under those 18 autonomous regions, there will be responsibility both from social health services, but also from um, agriculture and forestry and, and animal health and, and food issues, as you will hear later from Jana's presentation. So, and there will also be other sectors included. So, going from those over 300 municipalities, we go to 18 regions, which will help us. But it's very, very uh, big change in our country because we have lived now nearly 400 years so that we have had a municipality level and governmental level. And now there comes a regional level in between, and it is a very sensitive political issue which doesn't help us to make through this reform. There will be five cooperative areas, uh, but uh, they won't uh, be given a uh, big responsibility, so there they are more like coordinating, and therefore we need more uh, 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 state steering for this system. Our aim is to guarantee equal access to services and then uh, to reduce health inequalities. But we are uh, trying to do now other kind of tools than we have done before. So there have been a very uh, public sector own system where the organizer, uh, say, organizer and the producer have been the same. But now we are dividing those. So the responsibility for organizing will be uh, for the region, and then there will be more independent providers then, which are then um, transparently um, followed, uh, that they uh, would give uh, more client-oriented approach and then uh, by their uh, information we will make the seamless um, uh, path, patient and client pathways there. So it will need a lot of uh, new information for government and regions there, but uh, the system will then be more flexible, which then perhaps helps more and we believe that it helps more uh, those who really need uh, a lot of services, like, like old people are, are, and chronic uh, diseases. 
Here you see the picture uh, where my colleague Jana will then uh, continue. It shows the 18 new regions under which the responsibility of organizing and following up the efficiency and, um, and effectiveness of our system will then be. I won't go in to, uh, deep into this uh, picture, but if you need some more, uh, more information, you will get it. There is a lot of that. Also, uh, uh, international evaluations of these principles we are now putting through. So thank you from my side, and now I give the floor to my colleague Jan. Dr. Tegnell and the whole team, you are very warmly welcome also on behalf of the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry to Helsinki and, and Finland, and I am sure that it will be a very busy week uh, for, for you and a lot of material to understand the, the system in Finland. And I am just going briefly go, to go through uh, the material from our side. But to start the story, uh, and to show in a very concrete way how the One Health approach is uh, living, because uh, Paivi, my, my colleague, has chosen the room here in the House of the Estates. And if you look uh, up there, you can easily see in which room you are. You are in the room of the farmers. So this is to show that uh, the glue between us is, of course, linked to food and, and water. Uh, because uh, they are one of the uh, crucial things, of course, for the health and well-being of everyone also in, in this country. So the One Health uh, aspect is something that I would say that one of the cornerstones of the approach of our cooperation today and uh, knowing quite well also the situation around the world, honestly, I'm proud of uh, the situation in our country. It doesn't mean that... Uh, that there's no room for improvement, of course. As Paivi said, it's not only you know, how well we talk uh, between uh, ourselves as colleagues or the two ministries, but it has to go through the whole, whole chain on an everyday uh, basis. So I will start uh, with the food safety organization, and uh, the legislation is coming through the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry, and we have a very, um, so to say, good central uh, agency, uh, Finnish Food Safety Authority, with a very broad uh, scope. Um, it started in 2006 uh, when several uh, organizations were merged. So to say that really from field to fork, uh, from the forests and lakes to the plate of the consumers, this is now um, carried out uh, with centralized uh, instructions from one body. But the regional players uh, also in this sector have been uh, important uh, for the state and uh, also the municipalities, uh, including the laboratory uh, work when we are talking about uh, food testing, either microbiological tests or chemical uh, tests. But I want to emphasize that this is not only a job of the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry, uh, but there is a very, very uh, close contact, of course, with our system uh, ministries, not least with the Ministry of Social Affairs and Health, and the linkage, of course, to THOL, uh, the, um, uh, the Public Health Institute and uh, the uh, Medicine Agency, etc. Et but also uh, when we are talking about uh, residues, uh, pesticides, uh, and the control of chemicals, there we have a very close cooperation with the Ministry of Employment and the, the Economy. And from the Ministry of Finance side, uh, we have, of course, and uh, we need good cooperation with the customs. And the customs have traditionally have their own laboratory uh, facilities in, in, in Finland. And also, when we are talking about uh, the soldiers, the soldiers, uh, the younger and, and the older ones, they need to eat every day as well. So, of course, the Ministry of Defense and how to take uh, care of the food safety issues is, is linked. So I try to put all the players in, in one, on one slide. But there's a lot of material available, starting from the European Union legislation and the demands uh, that also are, are um, describing the situation 
even from national planning on uh, annual basis and multi-annual basis, how to take care of the food safety control in, in uh, this country. But as you already heard, we have more than 300 municipalities and uh, the basic for food control and also for animal health and welfare has been uh, the job of the local authorities. The animal health and welfare side by, by legal requirements have been a work coming from the state. And the state in a way has bought the job from the local uh, authorities. But when we go in the area of food control, that has been by the legislation a job of the municipalities them, themselves. So we have a mixture of centralized and decentralized uh, system. But today, uh, it's not these more than 300 uh, municipalities that do all the work. Uh, step by step, we have increased the number or, uh, or increased the number of cooperation, so to say, but decreased the number of the units of the municipal uh, authorities. And at the moment, there are 62 of them. So they do cooperate. So that they can specialize, they don't need to do all the jobs in each of the 313 municipalities. And I think that is important from the knowledge point of view and the expertise point of view as the European Union and our national legislation is demanding, full of details. Not everyone is, is capable of doing all the work uh, anymore. And I will come back to that with this reform that Baivi uh, Silanauke was already referring to. That is why we have been supportive for this uh, regional uh, change on, on national uh, basis. And the regional state administrational agencies have specific uh, duties uh, also linked to animal health, animal welfare and, and episodics when they are in a way checking how the municipalities have been uh, working. And the same is uh, the issue for, for food uh, control. So to say more systematic uh, control approach, whether the municipalities have been able to carry out their own job. That has been controlled regionally. And that is uh, the basis for our uh, future as uh, well. There are specific areas which are totally centralized, like meat inspection. So the central body, Evira, Finnish Food Safety Authority, is responsible for, uh, for this work. And there are details where the work is divided between uh, the, the municipal authorities and uh, EVIRA based on the possibilities uh, by, by law to give this uh, kind of uh, authority. But the supervision, the guidance is, is clearly uh, centralized. Just for your uh, information, some back, background information about how big the, uh, the households are compared to some other countries. And as Paivi already said, it is also a challenge for this area that uh, the number of inhabitants in Finland is, is small, but the country by geographic is big. So it also is a challenge for the resources and the effect, cost effective use of, of the resources as, as such. But of course, all of us, we decide uh, how big the family as such is. And then I wanted to raise a few issues uh, which, uh, which I think are, are crucial for you to, to understand where the major uh, emphasis of this country uh, has been during uh, not only years, but uh, decades. The good cooperation I was referring to between the, uh, the veterinary side and the human uh, doctor side is clearly linked to microbial uh, risks. And that is where we are very good at. This zoonotic uh, cooperation uh, is very fluent uh, in, in this country, and it is not a, between the authorities, but we know the commitment of our food chain as well. So that is why the prevalence of certain bacteria like Salmonella and Campylobacter is very low compared to many other countries around the world, even within the European uh, um, uh, Union. And that is why we have, uh, when we access the European Union, specific legislation as our colleagues from Sweden, with whom we cooperated very nicely at that time, we have specific additional guarantees, for instance, when we uh, import meat. 
And just by coincidence, last week, uh, I'm sure everyone has been following the discussion about the Brazilian uh, meets and, and how the situation is. One of the reasons perhaps why we have imported a little less of, of the meat is that it's more expensive to, to export it to, to countries where we have these additional requirements for, for salmonella uh, control. But this is not only about what uh, legislation says and what uh, the, the authorities say, but it's also about uh, the commitment of the whole food chain, starting from the feed of the, uh, the, the animals. We are extremely uh, proud of these uh, more than one million food hygiene proficiency exams. I think this is quite unique in the world. So we have demands legally that when you are working, we are your worker in an establishment, that you have to pass this exam. But it is quite in fashion today also for youngsters to get this kind of a uh, card, which shows that you know the basics about uh, hygiene. And I think that this is something that uh, could be a model for, for some other countries as well, to take it as a you know, normal part of, of their life, to know and understand the basics of uh, good food um, hygiene. Transparency is the world of, uh, word of today, clearly, and that is why we have this OIVA system, with, with, which uh, you will know more if you go through the, the material, where the results of the food control inspections are publicly uh, available at the entrance of, of the food premises, but also you can find the results of the latest inspections from, from the web uh, pages. So the zoonotic situation in general is good. Of course, we have uh, challenges. Uh, and uh, when you check more, you find uh, the areas where you have to improve the situation, like is the case with the human listeriosis. Um, from the nature uh, point of view, we, we have uh, challenges for tick-borne uh, diseases, uh, Lyme's disease, and uh, for uh, this tick-borne encephalitis as well. But otherwise, uh, we, we, I would say that uh, from the vector uh, side, also from the climate point of view, the situation in, in Finland is, is extremely good compared to the more southern uh, countries. The parasitic situation both in animals and humans is, is uh, uh, very good, also partly due uh, to our climate uh, situation. But if you and when you uh, find uh, the places where more improvement is, is needed, and I'm sure that now when we will have these municipal level uh, elections uh, within one month, this indoor malt uh, discussion will be uh, on, on, on the agenda, how to get money to, to, to take better care of, uh, of the inside air. And I know that this is the case in many other countries uh, as uh, well. Just the background material for you, I will not definitely go into details. The biggest problem uh, uh, during the past few years, even this year, has been norovirus, uh, which is an easily spreading uh, virus, of course, goes by when you shake hands, if you don't wash your hands properly. And uh, also from the food uh, side, uh, we have tried to teach in, in, in brackets the European Union that you have to take good care of the water, uh, with which you water the, um, the berries or, or the vegetables, not to spread it uh, via uh, the good food to all the clients uh, within uh, Europe as well. Just shortly about the food recall, so if something goes wrong and every now and then something can go wrong, I, either technically or by a human error or even on purpose, and what I'm very proud of uh, in, in this country is that there's definitely no uh, attitude uh, to hide if something goes uh, wrong. So if there's a need for product withdrawal, this is published on uh, the newspapers, paid by the company uh, itself. It is the duty of, of the company. And uh, at the same time, it is also published, of course, by the Finnish Food Safety Authority. But this works very well indeed, because I think that the general attitude clearly is that if something has gone wrong, the best thing is to tell it the quicker uh, than, than later. And therefore, I count on, on the system, and whether they are allergens, uh, which can be life-threatening, 
it is a must that this uh, thing uh, works um, every, every single day. And then just a few uh, words about the animal health uh, situation, not only from the zoonotic uh, point of view, which I already uh, mentioned, but uh, we have a very good reputation from the animal health point of view when we are talking about the most infectious animal diseases. And there are several reasons for that. The location here in the north being uh, one of them. You know, not too many farms com compared to many others. We don't have uh, a history of markets. So people don't go to markets to buy uh, animals. They are sold from one place uh, to another or via a slaughter, uh, slaughterhouse uh, uh, more and more uh, today. And that is crystal clear that it uh, helps to avoid the spreading of the diseases. And also the farmers, they know the risks linked to these infectious diseases, even when they are buying animals from abroad, knowing you know, that we are a member of the European uh, Union. And that is clearly linked to the AMR, the Antibiotics Resistance System, which is uh, of, of uh, good uh, level in, in, in our country. And the prudent use of antibiotics is uh, an, an issue in this uh, country. The veterinarians don't get benefit uh, if they uh, give uh, uh, medicines uh, to the farmers. Uh, Antibiotics uh, are used only uh, based on diagnosis. Preventive use is, is, uh, is, does not uh, exist. And we have tried to be forerunners in, in this area uh, for decades, uh, also on, on European uh, Union uh, level. And the basic for this is, the, of course, the good animal husbandry, the good practices, but also that the animal health situation is, is good. And there we have, of course, the linkage to the, uh, to the animal welfare uh, issue. And uh, the state has taken this uh, seriously, even in a way that, which I know is quite rare compared to many other countries, although, although these subsidy uh, issues uh, exist in all the European Union countries. But we also have integrated uh, animal well-being subsidy system for, for our uh, country, and it is covering quite well uh, both the beef and uh, pork uh, areas. Uh, and for your information, I don't definitely go into details of, of uh, this slide, but this is how we try to sell, of course, also the Finnish food by telling the situation in our country that the most uh, serious animal diseases have either never existed in our country or they have been eradicated uh, ages ago. Even the diseases that are of zoonotic uh, nature and are still really clearly uh, of great importance uh, globally. And that is why we have always been uh, uh, eager to help and assist other countries in, in these uh, uh, challenges around um, the world. And as I already mentioned, for the, for the animal welfare is clearly linked to the use of antibiotics. And that is why what I'm very, very extremely proud of, that Finland is definitely one of the rare countries where we can produce broiler chicken without using antibiotics at all. And uh, that the only reason being that they are so well taken care of and it starts from the feet, of course. And there are several indicators, so if you are interested, this will be available for you uh, with, with the material we have provided and will provide to you what, uh, whatever you, you prefer to, uh, to uh, have. And, of course, linked to these uh, indicators, it is linked to the uh, residues. And, as all the other European Union countries and the countries that like to and want to uh, um, export to European Union, you have to have a good system for uh, the control of the residues and these uh, non-compliant uh, numbers are impressive and this is the work we keep uh, going uh, to do. And I'm, I want, once more want to assure that this is not only to say that it is the civil servants or the political leaders to, uh, to, to say, but this has to start from the animal owners themselves, that is clear. 
And then, uh, in, in the end, a few words about the, uh, the administration that Paivi was already referring to. So, indeed, as for the health care side, uh, also for our area, there will be 18 autonomous uh, regions. And these, in a summary, will be responsible for taking care of, uh, of our area uh, as well starting from the veterinary and public health uh, services to food uh, control uh, and uh, to uh, feed control to um, plant uh, control and animal uh, welfare issues. So the Finnish Food Safety Authority will retain most of its uh, present duties and then it's up to the autonomous regions to make the structure in their area. And as you saw from the very first slide of uh, Paivi, the situation is very different there in the north, where there are not so many uh, people and not so many farms either, but the services you have to have. And here in the south, the situation is, is of course, um, uh, different. But we are uh, indeed uh, confident that uh, this will be uh, running smoothly. And I have chosen you, as uh, baby you started, that, that the Finns are happy. So I want to show that also the piglets are happy, because uh, by law we have forbidden to cut the tail of the pig. And I know that this is happening in many countries. The reason being that if the circumstances are not good enough, unfortunately the pigs and the piglets start to eat each other's tails. And that's why they cut them, which I think is not such a good uh, thing. Therefore, I'm waving the tail of a Finnish piglet for you to say that not only uh, the human being has to be happy, but to have this one health approach, also the animals have to be happy. And it's our responsibility to take good care of them. So thank you very much and uh, take all the benefit of the time uh, here and I'm uh, I'm going to see you on, on Wednesday at, at least I guess during the dinner time and whatever is needed from uh, from the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry or Evira please be free to ask this is the transparent country and nothing to hide enjoy your stay thank you ladies and gentlemen the morning session and the opening of the joint external evaluation and external evaluation week is now uh, nearly closed. Some uh, words till, so I would like to say to you that whole Finland, the government, our organizations, our systems are at your service. So I enjoy, enjoy your week and, and learn, but also give us uh, openly every um, recommendations you feel that we should know. I wish you all the best here in Finland. The session is closed. Thank you. <laughs>